Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you about starter scotches. So whether you're brand new to whiskey or even if you're a bourbon aficionado just kind of looking to dive more into scotch, I've made a list of readily available and great whiskeys that will help you to learn everything that scotch has to offer. So stick around. This list is made up of both blended and single malt scotches that I feel are a great place to go. Now, you may disagree with some of the stuff that I'm about to say, but more importantly, you're probably going to feel like I just left some stuff out. So if something comes to your mind that does not show up on my list, leave it in the comments and what I'll do is I'll pin one to the top and I'll curate that list of some of the more requested ones. That way somebody a year from now will be able to see what the comments basically think is the right place to start with scotch. But uh, let me do one more quick thing before I get started. I want to just define something because some of you are going to be brand new with, to whiskey. A blend versus a single malt. So a single malt scotch is basically a single distillery that creates a scotch and usually they're doing this to achieve a very specific flavor profile or nose. Um, whereas a blend is exactly what it sounds like. They take multiple single malts and blend them together to also achieve a very specific flavor. So now that we've gotten through all of that, let's get on with the list. The first whiskey I want to suggest to you is the Glenlivet 12. Now you've probably seen this bottle at whatever bar you've been at and that's one of the benefits of this. It's extremely common in any bar, any shop, you'll be able to find this bottle. So uh, one of the cool things about it is the flavor profile. You're going to taste some pineapple in there, which is uh, kind of unique and, and I like that. And also one thing you're going to notice about scotch, a lot of scotches are very heavy on fruit. Um, and until we get to the eyelids anyway, but we'll get to those. So I suggest you try this one, go to a bar, order it and see what you think. It's a great place to start. Moving along, we're going to go to Johnny Walker Black. Now I've done a video on this before and personally this was where I started into scotch. Um, you know, my first whiskey was a bourbon, but this is where I started in scotch and it's extremely smooth. It's very approachable and you can find it anywhere. So Johnny Walker Black is a great scotch to order neat and see what you think. Next, let's go on to Chivas Regal 12. Now this is the first scotch that I would consider to be complex, especially on this list. And I think this would be a good one for you to purchase and a couple of reasons. Number one is that because of its complexity, you're going to learn a lot. And number two, you're going to find out real quick if scotch is really your thing. Um, there is a lot going on on this and if you really take your time to get to know it and try to pick out the different flavor profiles and nose, then I think you're going to learn a lot. So let's move on from Chivas. Um, on to Glenmorangie Original, also known as Glenmorangie Ten Year. So Glenmorangie is, um, it's very airy, it's kind of like fruity and light, and uh, it's, it's extremely approachable. I actually just had one a few nights ago because I didn't know what to order and I wanted something easy. So um, one thing to know is if you try the Glenmorangie and you don't really love it, try one of their, their uh, cask finishes, especially like the Sherry Oak cask. Now that's a, a pretty good whiskey, but don't give up on Glenmorangie if you don't love the Tenure. Try something else. Next, we're going to move on to, I don't have a bottle of it, I normally do, um, Glenfiddich 12. So Glenfiddich 12 is often remembered by people as being the green one with the stag on it. So um, it's uh, basically it's very common. You'll find it almost every bar and it's it's got a great flavor to it. It's very fruity um, and it's a great introduction to scotch for somebody who's more used to drinking bourbon because there's a bit of oak there um, kind of like right behind the scotch. It also happens to be the number one choice of the Baratheons. Drink. No, I'm not thirsty. Drink. Your king commands it. All right, sorry about that. I just couldn't resist. So up next, we've got Monkey Shoulder, which is a great example of a blend. And if you spend any time over on Reddit, you'll see that they often suggest this to newcomers to scotch. So this is really good because not only is it tasty, but it also is a good mixer for cocktails. So if you maybe can't get through the whole bottle uh, for whatever reason, or if you want to share it with somebody, then it mixes really well. So anyway, I think that's a really good one and I'll be doing a review on this one upcoming pretty soon. So up next, I want to talk about the McKellen 12 year sherry cask finish. Now I specifically picked this one because I think it's a good introduction to what sherry can do for a whiskey and uh, specifically a scotch. So 
I think um, that if you want, go back, watch uh, my previous review on it. It was like my fourth episode, so I apologize for all the bad lighting and, and terrible microphone and whatnot. But if you want more information on it, go watch that video. That being said, this is a pretty good one. And uh, they also have other types of finishes. So if you don't like the sherry, you know, maybe you won't like sherry in your scotch, but either way, try a couple of them. Up next, we've got Highland Park 12. Now, the reason I suggested Highland Park 12, I also did a video on 18, is that I personally felt like I did myself a disservice by having the 18 before the 12, because the 18 is a phenomenal whiskey, but the 12 is also really good, and it's a great starter scotch. So I think that you will enjoy this well-rounded um, scotch, and you could really learn a lot from it, similar to the Chivas Regal. All right. Let's move on to the next one. So we've got Ardbeg 10. Now Ardbeg 10, I, I think is a awesome whiskey. Now this is where you start kind of getting a little complex. And part of the reason for that is because this is one of the first to really introduce peat. Now peat gives whiskey uh, a very smoky nose and sometimes flavor, depending on how much peat there is. And Ardbeg does it in a very good way. They, it's very well rounded. It's not going to just totally destroy your, your nose or, or your taste buds, but it will give you a good introduction to what a peated whiskey can taste like. And that brings me to my next suggestion, Laphroaig 10. <laughs> now, those of you that have tried this before will know why I'm laughing. So Laphroaig 10 and any of the other ones, I, I happen to have a bottle of quarter cask uh, in my bar back there, but it is like it's like waking up the morning after camping and going over to the, the fire pit and just licking one of the logs. It's, that's what it tastes like. It's just so smoky that the reason I'm suggesting it, now a lot of people probably wouldn't agree that this is a starter scotch, but the reason I'm suggesting it is because scotch has many different regions and each one is kind of known for different things. Now where Laphroaig comes from is known for heavily peated whiskeys. And if you're going to enjoy scotch, you probably have to kind of get on the peat train. So that's why I would suggest Laphroaig 10 as the final whiskey in my list. Now, you may, as I said, not have heard a whiskey that you particularly think is a great starter scotch in this list. And if that is the case, please suggest in the comments below. But for any of you watching who are trying to learn from this video, anything that I suggested here is going to be a good starter. There's probably 20 more that I could have named. In fact, I did have to pare this list down. I actually uh, wanted to put Spayburn 10 on this list. This is a very fruity whiskey, but didn't quite make the cut as far as I was uh, kind of considering for this list. So go ahead, go out, try some scotches. Let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me if this list helped you or if you think that this is complete crap, <laughs> um, but whatever, you know it won't be. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you've had an awesome time and I hope you really, really enjoy scotch and get to love it. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.